Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we're going to have a look at plugs and sockets. Now, this particular plug is the standard type that was used in the UK and has been for many decades. Three pins, and unusually, like unplugged in other countries, it has a fuse in the plug itself. This particular one also says Morphe Richards on the back, and it also has the word fused on there. Uh, so this is a fairly old example. Uh, the sockets uh, look like that. Again, this is an old example about the uh, layout and pin spacing, whatever. Exactly the same as ones you can buy today. But we're not going to look at those particular ones because uh, prior to those being accepted as the sort of normal standard, there were certain other types which were attempted to be used, one of which was made by Dorman Smith. Now this is the socket that the offending plugs would fit into, and you see it has the three pins the same, except these pins happen to be round. This is also a round one designed to fit onto a uh, round conduit box. And the plugs, which uh, look like this, also had three pins, and they also have a fuse in them. But uh, there was a slightly unusual feature about these, which you uh, may be able to spot. So let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. Now, as I said, this uh, particular style of plug is the one that's currently in use in the UK. So this is a fairly older example with a bit of rust and corrosion there, but essentially it's the same sort of design. And the key function of these things is that inside there is a fuse, a 13 amp fuse in this case, and uh, that's there primarily because the flex from the plug to the appliance can be fairly thin. And these typically will be plugged into a socket outlet on a 30 or 32 amp circuit. So clearly, uh, if you wanted to have flex uh, without the fuse, the uh, flex here would have to be rated to uh, 32 amps or something, which would be a bit impractical because it would be far too large. So fuse is genuine there, 13 amps being the maximum. Uh, various other ratings available, usually three or five, although there are others as well. So uh, these Dorman Smith ones, which uh, look like these, were a sort of a competing standard uh, many uh, decades ago. You can't buy this anymore, totally obsolete. Certainly nobody makes these anymore, and it's highly unlikely anyone's got one in their house. But again, the uh, same requirements apply. Uh, three pins, of course, uh, line earth and neutral, and the plugs have a fuse in them. Again, to the front here it says uh, 13 amps maximum, and the fuse in here can be 13 amps or less. And these have a rather unusual feature in that the fuse is actually here, and it's actually the pin, or the live pin, of the uh, plug itself. So you can actually unscrew the pin here, and it comes out, and that's the fuse that you would replace in the event of it being necessary. Now, this is the 13 amp one, and it's white. It does say on the end what the rating is there. There's the end of it, uh, not desperately clear, but uh, it does say uh, 13A for 13 amps there. Now here's the plug itself, as you see it says 30 amp maximum, uh, pattern number there, made in England, and model number of this one is a M692 DS for Dorman Smith. Now the other pins are solid brass, the uh, neutral one here is just a cylindrical pin with a uh, slightly curved end, it's a bit loose there, and the earth pin has this uh, conical uh, taper on the end, and this slot all the way down the other side of it, and of course that fits in with a corresponding piece in the socket itself. Uh, the fuses just have this threaded component on the end which screws in here, and if you see in the bottom there there's actually a spring, the purpose of that spring being to apply a bit of pressure to the thread, so it will prevent the thing uh, accidentally unscrewing. Now there was some story about these, uh, allegedly a possible problem was that if you plugged it in the socket and this somehow came loose, which seems unlikely given the fact that there's a spring in there. Um, the possibility will be that this could be left in the socket, and of course that would be a live pin sticking out of the socket then. Obviously it's to be a hazard. Whether that actually happened or not is another matter. It certainly sounds like one of those uh, rumours which, uh, in theory, sounds plausible when you actually look into it. It isn't because, uh, say, the whole point of that spring being in there would be to prevent it unscrewing accidentally. So let's just have a look inside. It's just secured with two screws, and of course unlike the uh, types used today, you wouldn't have to actually undo this unless you were in fact replacing the wiring. So just two brass screws hold it together. Inside there, fairly straightforward. There's the uh, earth pin there, just solid brass, single screw in the end. Neutral pin again is just a solid brass component with the uh, 
hole for the wire on the top. And the fuse there obviously screws into this block, which contains uh, just a threaded hole there. Side port there for the cable and the screws clamp the cable. And then the spring component there just sort of sits between the two and again provide that pressure on the thread so that uh, it wouldn't actually unscrew accidentally. Other than that, just the uh, flex will come at the bottom and the similar sort of bar clamp there just to secure the flex coming in. And if you look inside here, we've got the neutral and line marks with N and L. And it has the instructions about removing the pins to wire, which of course make it much easier. Just take the pin out, put the wire in, and then put the pin back in, clamp the flex underneath. The earth is not marked uh, with the E letter. However, given it's the third one, then uh, pretty obviously it's the only wire you've got left over. Now the pin on this one is white, uh, as you can see there. It's a brass end and the middle is made out of very hard uh, ceramic material. It isn't something that's going to just break or snap off easily. And so this is a 13 amp one. I do always have a few of these and they've all got the same uh, white fuse in there, 13 amps. Now allegedly there were some other values of these, uh, some I think were red, possibly for the 5 amps. I've never actually seen one. I say these are fairly uncommon items anyway. Uh, these are actually all the same model. There's just another example there. They've all got the uh, DS logo on the back there. And of course fuse, because at the time when these were introduced, most other plugs did not have a fuse in. So of course it was necessary to uh, distinguish the fact that these ones did, particularly in the event of a fault. So obviously if the fuse blew, it would normally be the case to go to the fuse box and replace it there. Whereas of course with these, it will be uh, replacing the fused pin in the plug instead. Now this particular example, which I acquired the other day, has uh, for some reason got two fuses in it. Uh, as you see, both the uh, white 13 amp variety again. And of course this is not really something you want, because uh, with two fuses, one in the line and the neutral, if the line fuse blows, well that's fine, uh, no real difference there. Still disconnects the power, and uh, of course if the neutral one goes and the line one does not, the appliance won't work anymore because there's no circuit. But of course all the uh, stuff in the actual appliance will still be connected to live, so uh, potentially a dangerous situation there. And of course that's why uh, double pole fusing went out in the 1950s. So uh, just have a look inside this one to see what actually happened here. It's a rather odd uh, circumstance. So, uh, and so it's not the sort of thing that would be accidentally done either because clearly the uh, fuse is only supposed to go in the one position. So here we've got the line one, or which obviously is exactly the same, it's just the uh, same as in the other one with the uh, spring arrangement there, just screwing into that block of brass there. And again that's the same as this one from the other plug there. Now this is the uh, other one, so uh, again this screws in, but uh, presumably this is the uh, neutral from the other one. So. Right, so what we've got there then, they've obviously undone this piece here, which presumably was separately made to the block there. Presumably with a fair amount of effort, because that doesn't just unscrew, of course. And then for some reason they've screwed the pin, or rather than the pin, they've put this uh, fuse in there instead, which does actually fit moderately well. Similar length actually as well, so uh, it's not quite the same, but close enough. So what were the uh, exact reason of that would be is uh, something of a mystery. Possibly uh, the only likely conclusion would be that it was used on a uh, split supply, so rather than uh, neutron live, say 0 and uh, 240 volts, it was some other supply such as a uh, centred earth type, so you had sort of earth here and then it was sort of 55 on each or something for 110 or some other bizarre combination, which may have required uh, double pole fusing for whatever reason, but either way it does seem somewhat unlikely. Uh, another issue here is that there's no flex grip on this particular example, that's where the uh, screws would go. 
but as you see there's no uh, grip in there at all compared to the uh, other one here with the two screws and that bar so uh, it's not as if there's even any holes there so it hasn't been taken out and lost it never actually came with any in the first place so perhaps this was actually made for some uh, specific purpose sort of factory made with the two fuses in there so it seems unlikely so I want to go to the trouble of unscrewing that and putting a fuse in instead well, here's an example of a socket, uh, obviously, to go with that plug. Let's see just the three uh, round holes there and the uh, DS logo on the bottom there. And in a similar vein to these uh, current types we use now, they do have the shutters over the line and neutral holes. And uh, so does this one. Very simple mechanism. Obviously, it's covered up there. And the uh, you'll see in there the half of the uh, piece there. So when the pin is inserted, the plug, it will obviously push that sideways and open up the holes like that. It just exposes the socket tubes there in the bottom. And of course see the earth pin of course is longer so that will always push the uh, shutter out of the way before the other pins get there. And on the back here you can see the shutter mechanism there it's just a sliding piece of insulated material pivoted on that single screw at the top. And then on the back we've just got the standard three terminals, uh, neutral, earth and of course line at the bottom there. This particular one is round to fit on a standard uh, round conduit box, holes being two inches apart for fixing into the back of the box. And the uh, little tab there is just to connect the earth to the conduit box itself which would typically be metal and that just comes across to the earth terminal here. The only other writing on the back is the uh, model number, let's see at the bottom there, which is an M674. So look there at the Dorman Smith three pin plugs with fuses in them. So these things are not made anymore, totally obsolete. They were fitted in uh, moderate numbers in some areas, uh, certain local authorities bought them and fitted them in their housing, but ultimately they were unsuccessful. And uh, of course these are what uh, generally used today. I don't actually mind the design of these, they're quite nice and compact uh, compared to the uh, other one there, it's uh, substantially smaller. Whether or not the uh, earth pin being remaining in the socket did actually happen is uh, another matter. There's certainly plenty of uh, stories about it. it may have could have happened but uh, no real evidence to suggest whether it actually did. The sockets of course uh, probably came in different designs, I've only got this one which I uh, say is just this old uh, round one, but uh, again, it would have been available in no doubt, different styles as well. Until next time, thanks for watching.